When it comes to the overall goodness of Pocket Monsters, people will often discuss what they think to be the worst name in the series. But not me. I think there are names that should take the spotlight instead of being overshadowed by all the negativity. So in this video I will talk about my top 10 favourite Pokemon names. And then I'll probably do worst after. So rules applied. One per evolution line and names are ranked on their creativity and how well they fit the Pokemon in question. And it's also my opinion because I could think that other things will fit things better. So with that said, let's roll. <laughs> So quite obviously the first Pokemon to start out with this is one of those Eeveelutions. And while the name Eevee is based off the first two letters in the word evolution, it takes a lot more than fancy talk to pull a name out of the bag. So as close as Espeon was to getting out of this prize, this goes to the odd name out because of the legit fanciness of it. Vaporeon. Alright, three syllables, sounds a bit petty for an excuse, I know, but I tend to be a creative guy with a pretentious name for a Let's Play series. What strikes me is that they could have stuck with Aquion or Liquion, but since there's already a name for the Pokemon, they sound unimaginative. Vaporeon is a combination of water vapor, which is the gaseous form of water, and Eon meaning a long period of time, more or less referring to the long evolution process. I think the name fits really well and goes beyond what it could naturally do. Sorry, please excuse me, I'm talking shit. No. So as you might notice in a few seconds, this list is going to carry a few trends. And the first is that we have yet another Water Dwellers. Yes, this is a tie. Big surprise, isn't it? From a glance, Legendaries are Legendaries, and they're bound to have a creative name. Well, some at least. These two can fight all they want about how one can use Thunder with 100% accuracy in the first turn, and not in the double battle, nerds. And the other can claim to have their own individual move. But this is about names, so I'm not going to boot one off the list. Starting with Kyogre. His name can be a combination of Kai, meaning ocean, and Orca, which I've mentioned before actually being more related to Dolphin than a whale. It can also mean Kaio, which is King of the Sea, and the first two characters in Kaio Sea, aka Neptune, and can also refer to Eager, or Eiger, a tidal phenomenon. All that bio mixed into something based off of the Hebrew legend of the Leviathan. Now we switch over to the other side. Lugia's name may base off of Lutetium, a silverish element which is named after Lutetia, the Roman name for Paris, the city of light. It can also derive from Lugio, which is Latin for lie dormant, linked to the way Lugia lies at the bottom of the sea, as well as Luna, Latin for moon. It can, but it's very unlikely, come from the Beluga whale also. So in conclusion, it's two different Pokemon at fanfic war with each other. Oi. Next Pokemon is one of my favorite Pokemon, which is probably going to be a future list, who knows? I know a lot of people will request that, or already have, but Tyranitar. This isn't to say I get goosebumps or an erection when saying his name, but it is a pretty awesome name for one of my favorite Pokemon, as I've already mentioned. The thing about Tyranitar's name, it can go either way. It can come from Tyrannosaurus or Tyrant. But as we've seen in Gen 6 so far, there is a T-Rex Pokemon in there, which makes Tyranitar more based off Godzilla. And that is where its Japanese names come into play. Bangaras, which is its Japanese name, is a combination of Yaban, meaning savage, or Ban, barbarian, and Kirai, hate. And when it comes to Giras, that may derive from Gojira, which is the Japanese name for Godzilla, and one of my favorite bands, and Angiras, the Japanese name for the character Anguirus. So you can see how both the Japanese name and the English name link together in a way, and share unique meaning to the name Tyranitar and the Pokemon in question. Sorry. It took me a while to understand that I got the canine part, but Arca. And then I started collecting a few Yu-Gi-Oh cards, along with playing the Elder Scrolls, and picked up on the word Arcane. And that's exactly what Arcanine is described, as a dog of mystery or secrets, which is best to describe a Pokemon which is described in this Pokedex as legendary. And with a base stat total of 555, it's definitely able to reach greater heights. <laughs> Now when you see a starter appearing on the list, you might think that the list will now be predictable and all sense of enjoyment will be lost, and you could be wrong. And I have good reasons for including Empoleon, so there. Well of course his name comes from Emperor Penguin and Pole meaning North or South Pole, but wait, does Eon mean a long time again? Not exactly. Napoleon. You know, that famous emperor who invaded Russia and ruled France during the later stages of the French Revolution? Russia is quite cold, and with a trident representing authority in Empoleon, it portrays him, because the male version is more suited to a male leader, as an arctic warrior that stands proud above all else. And with wings instead of arms, it can do proper salutes as well. Bet you never really thought of that. <laughs> Ampharos. Ampharos is simply a combination of amp, measuring current, and pharos, which, get this, Greek for lighthouse. If this didn't happen already, I wouldn't have paid much attention to its fabulous design. Kids, it's Zeus. 
It is very clever, and I feel just epic saying it. Um, for us. Now the problem people may have with newer generations is that the names don't feel that great when you say them. I beg to differ. Who wants to shout out, I caught a gigalith at the top of their lungs? Come on, be experimental. With that kick-ass golem succession design in mind, the name Gigalith is a combination of Gigas, which is Greek for giant, and describes a race of earthborn giants in Greek mythology. So it's not just Giga, as you might have taken at face value. And the second half can either be Goliath, who you know is the Palestine warrior that got his ass kicked by a stone, or Monolith, which is a geographical feature consisting of a single piece of massive rock. I'm gonna place my bets on Monolith because one, it makes more sense, and two, Let's see number one for more details. Three. Deoxys. This is a very hard one to spell out or even pronounce. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Yeah! Uh, that's DNA. Or what my friends called it in school. Da na 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 na. Acid! The reason why Deoxys is so high up on this list is that a simple name made up from a not so simple formula which creates everything in our bodies besides that of what plasmids can supply. It's mentioned in the seventh movie that Deoxys stars in, how his name came to be, and it does seem like a Greek mythology fashioned influence. This further describes the amazing ability it has to regenerate, which in hindsight are the forms that people don't get sick of seeing. Not even to this day, because Deoxys has always been such a unique concept, and a name adds to originality. When it comes to even more originality, even though Gengar doesn't have an origin as unique as a legendary such as Deoxys, and therefore unfair to compare the two despite this being a top 10. It's a name that I don't really get tired of saying because it's short and slightly alliterated. Just two syllables start with the same pronunciation, not two words. Gengar is described to be the shadow Pokemon and is also appeared to be based off the Cheshire Cat. But as it is known to imitate people's shadows, there is a paranormal being from folklore that is a double of a living person and is known as the Doppelganger. Gengar can be an anagram of Ganger. That's why it strikes to me so well. An anagram like that fits to me and it's like naming a business. What seems more recognizable to you? Alamon Mamoya? Or simply Gengar? You can come up with the best amount of combinations all you want, but you'll never get something that hits with the upcoming market of gaming as much as selling your game Gengar. Complexity doesn't always mean better. Remember that when you're designing something, friends. <laughs> Gyarados. The origin just seems almost untraceable. Okay, Dose can refer to two, second in line of the evolution line, but look at all the possibilities of Gyarados. Gyakutasu meaning massacre or slaughter, Gyakio meaning hardship or adversity. These words don't refer to its design nor its typing, but more or less its behavior and struggles it faced as a Magikarp in the sad old tadpole pond. Gyaku means reverse or contrary, referring to how such a weak Pokemon became a sea monster, and my interpretation is irony, more or less. Furthermore, Arashi meaning storm or Arasoi meaning conflict, basically how it reflected during the wars. Dos can even be Dosu, which is onomatopoeia for the piercing of flesh, or in Gyarados's case, full-on impalement. And I think that might be a possibility of mention as we've seen in Pokedex entries that read about draining bodily fluids, so there's always that. The vast number of possibilities for the name Gyarados and the name itself still manages to sound intimidating and threatening. It's a shame that I caught a shiny Gyarados lost all sense of meaning a long time ago. So overall, between Gengar and Gyarados, they both came close, but I had to stick to the one that had best meaning for me. Thinking outside the box. Sort of. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to look forward to more stuff and follow the links in the description. Thank you, and lights out. The thing is, well... Whoa, shh. Let's follow it. Up. Uh, you're behind there, aren't you?